Um, we are represented here this morning by East and West Coast, soon to be West Coast. I think she's still making her way in, and just about every place in between. So uh, really excited to have you guys here because this is a very exciting topic. It's a very exciting industry, and I'm excited to be a part of it, and I'm even more excited to share uh, with you guys. But just a few administrative things before we get going, some details. In case you didn't pick up on the fact that we do have coffee, we try to make sure everybody knew that. We do have coffee in the back. And if at any point you want something, just feel free to get up and make yourself at home. We have that. Restrooms are here in the back of the radio station. Ladies, right out this door. Men is just on the other side. Um, we also have, uh, there's a cooler in the back that has, uh, there are water bottles, and I think we have some Coke products in there, uh, Coke Zero and Coca-Cola as well. And uh, we'll be doing. We'll be taking a break in a couple hours, and uh, we'll also we have one, we'll have lunch together, and and uh, you'll see. You in your as a matter of fact, is um, Mallory, uh, or maybe Tyler? Can you do me a favor? Okay. Mal, can you hand me one of those uh, the folders? I just want to make reference to it here. You'll see an agenda that we will follow somewhat today. At least it gives, it gives us a, a, a road map. We may not stick with it. Thank you very much. No problem. To the minute or to the second. But uh, these are uh, the primary <laughs> topics that, that, uh, that we'll be covering. And I wanted to say that this is it's a special for me being here because some of you guys have told this, but I actually taught here for about 14 years. And it was uh, the university that brought my family and I here to, uh, to Bourbon A and to the Chicagoland area. We lived in Columbus, uh, Ohio, where I had worked in radio, and I'll get into more of that in just a bit. But we moved here uh, to actually, I managed this radio station and um, assisted in the programming and taught classes and moonlit as an instructor in the MBA program where I taught uh, marketing management and uh, business communications, marketing communications, business uh, organizational behavior and organizations, and a number of other courses, and, and really loved every minute of it, and have been gone now for about, about six years as I've uh, pursued and built a voiceover business. So it's, uh, it's great to come back, and my special thanks to the radio station. And Carl Fletcher, who is not in here at the moment, but <laughs> Carl was actually a student of mine when I first came here and has gone on to have his own very successful radio career and has come back here and now runs uh, and manages the operation of the, of the radio station. So uh, my thanks to you and, uh, and to be in this classroom with these workstations. This is a pretty cool setup, don't you think? So i uh, really excited that, that we could do it, do it in here. I want to take some time up front just to get a sense of, of who everybody is and get to know each other a little bit better, where you're coming from. So here's what I'm going to ask. Let's start over here with you. It's, yeah, Greg, right? My contacts are trying to adjust here to the distance. Uh, Greg, we're going to start with you. Just give us you know, your name, where you're from, what you do, and I'm also interested in knowing the most important thing that you hope to learn or take away from today as well. So uh, to start here, we'll just kind of work our way around the room. Uh, my name is Greg Knowles. I live in Crest Hill. Uh, I am a uh, stay-at-home father of two and uh, really hoping to get into the business of, uh, just actually that, the business side, <coughs> getting, finding out startup and how do I get started in the audio, audio book field. Is this something you've been thinking about for a while? or? Uh, yeah, and actually uh, one of my friends uh, said, oh, you know, I've been, I've been looking forward to it, I've been thinking about it, and it's like, well, that's a great idea for me, you know, being a stay-at-home dad, that's right. something that I can do from home to add income with my family. So, great. Uh, great. All right, good to have you here. Roy? Yeah, my name is Roy. I live in Lenox, Illinois, and for about 35 years was in uh, preaching ministry. And uh, between that kind of thing, currently selling used cars, so if you need one. <laughs> Did you bring business cards? Uh, no, I didn't. I, I deliberately didn't. But, uh, you know, how I got into this, I don't know really. It was just a few months ago somebody said, hey, you know, you got a pretty good taste for radio and your voice isn't too bad. <laughs> and so I'm kind of looking uh, at um, a new career and very excited about it. Hope to be able to uh, just pay the bills. And yeah. Anything about that would be great. Okay. Good. And these burning questions you have on your mind as you come in here today that uh, you're hoping to have answered? Um, yeah. Just how to do the deed. Okay. You know, I mean, there's blank slate, dude, you know, so. You're a sponge, right? I'm a sponge. That's, That's sponge hard to hear. If you want to come back. Excellent, good. <coughs> good, good, good. All right. I am Ray, not Roy. <laughs> um, I live in Orland Park, and um, I took a part 
district course on voices for all for uh, voiceovers, and it kind of spurred my interest in it. it looked like something that'd be a nice cottage industry. Thought I'd give it a shot and see what goes on with it. Uh, currently uh, unemployed, self-employed, semi-retired. So I'm kind of like looking for a different career outside of the IT industry, which kind of went south after uh, Y2K. So mm -hmm. just looking at something that uh, I can use. I can use portability. Right. Eventually, I want to move to Arizona, so this may be something that I can carry over and just work from home. And you know, that's what I would like to do too. And if you could help convince my wife that that's a good idea, it's a good idea. I would. Yeah. Here she comes right now. She loves snow and ice and all that goes no, with it. And I, I've had it with that. Too. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, when people say, oh, it's a dry heat, you stick your head in the oven. It's like, no, it's not, <laughs> it's not 400 degrees. And not exactly I'm the not same. I'm looking forward to uh, Phoenix where it's like 120. I could take it for like maybe three or four days, but right. I'm looking more toward the, um, it's called the Verde Valley, which is halfway between Phoenix and Flagstaff. And if you want to move to Flagstaff, you might as well stay in Chicago. You know, with the cold and the snow and everything. Okay. But it, the dry heat just makes my body feel just wonderful. Well, that's my dream. We'll see. It takes two people to agree on that, so yeah. uh, I'm still, oh, I'm still working her over. I've been out oh. there quite a few times looking around and yeah. seeing how the housing market is. and It still hasn't gotten to where I need to go, but uh, yeah. in a couple of years, I'm definitely going to be out there. Good. Well, this is, and this is something, as you said, it is mobile, and you can take it wherever you go. Right. So, right. good. Brent? My name is Brenda. I'm from Bourbon A. And didn't travel too far today. So. <laughs> uh, about 15 years ago, we had a class reunion, and the president of the class was speaking. And he says, You know, I remember Brenda because she gave this speech, um, or actually, I recited the poem. And that's, you know, the biggest thing they ever remembered of about. Me and uh, later on, a couple of people came up and said, Boy, you ought to do something with your voice. So back then, I didn't find much, you know, resources to, to get started, and I had a full time job anyway. So, um, flash forward um, about three years ago, I was employed by an accountant, and, and he became um, terminally ill, so I knew the, the end was near, and I thought, Well, the stars are lining out because my mother had given me a little inheritance. She had passed away. I thought, well, I had a little bit of money. Maybe I could check into it. And so I did. Uh, I took a class, um, which was a good thing and a bad thing. Um, after three days they, of classes, we made a demo. Well, I was totally unprepared. So be prepared to make a demo. <laughs> So it'll be good, and, and I'm sure Bill will agree that you have to have a, yeah. a knockout demo. But anyway, um, I've been doing this pretty much full time for the past year. Then. So. Good, glad you could come. Brenda and I met, oh gosh. I took Bill out to lunch. <laughs> yeah, that's right, you did. Oh, I think there was an article in the newspaper, and you had contacted me. Right. And right. you said, I'm trying to move in that direction. A couple times. I said, well, I have so many questions. Could I buy you lunch? And we went out to lunch, and I had tons of questions, didn't I? <laughs> so. Yeah, well, I mean, there's, there are so many questions that, that, you know, that go with this. And I remember because, I mean, I went through that myself, and there was nobody to answer them. Right. Uh, I mean, it was hard to find that information, yes. and, it, and it takes a while. So if you can find you know, a, a source, one place where you can get at least a lot of that information mm -hmm. extracted... Um, and I know when I talk to people, they always have a long list of questions. And again, I understand because I went through the same thing. Well, good. Hopefully, we'll answer even more for you today, Brenda. Good. So good. Lene? Um, I'm Lene Yates. I'm also from Bourbon A. Just ran over here right after I'm eating his breakfast. So. And Lene's one of my former broadcasting students That's from right. back in the day. That's right. I was with Bill when Shine was over behind our library. And so um, I just so happened to hear his spot on the radio. and. My husband and I had been looking into alternate employment options. Um, in the past, I've been stay-at-home mom. Um, I've been adjuncting here at Olivet for nearly seven years now, and um, just looking for 
something else. I picked up working some hours at my husband's office, but I'm not interested necessarily in carting my kids off to daycare, so they come with me, and it's a unique situation, and this, I feel like, would offer me the opportunity to really stay home with them and be flexible, still go to all the school functions that my older kids have, but also earn some additional income. As you all know, the economy is not fantastic, and so anything that you can get away from the job market and sort of not have to depend on someone else to supply your paycheck is really, I feel like, the way to go. So um, the questions I'm hoping to have answered today is how to really market myself, how to find the right place to look, how to market myself, and then also how to use the software. I would like, I'm interested to know what software you're recommending and how to really use the software <coughs> to get my voice out there and, and right. find those jobs. Good. Well, I'll tell you this. My, my experience has been, and I talk to a lot of voiceover talent almost on a daily basis, the biggest gap that exists in the market is between talent and money. In other words, and we'll talk about this later, but the, uh, the old uh, voiceover success equation was great voice equals success, and that's not true at all. I mean, if you sat with me for a week, you would find out. I talk to a lot of people who are extremely talented and have, had seen, have, have seen big success in spurts, they get this big national commercial, or they get you know their voice for this cartoon on this network, or they, and then it's like it dries up for a year and there's nothing. It's like so, how do you create? How do you create a sustained income? So that's that's the burning question on everybody's mind, and uh, we'll address that as well as the technical issues as well. So it's good to have you here, Lene. Carl Fletcher again, my special. I don't think you were here when I gave you my special thanks before, but really for being our host today, yeah, no and for being so gracious and. Uh, yeah, so anyhow, go ahead. Yeah, um, we're just kind of a brief introduction and why we're here. Is that uh, yeah, and if, you have, if there's a burning sorry. question that you're hoping to have answered okay, today. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I've always been interested in you know, voiceovers, just being in radio for, for many years. You know, just the idea of, okay, it's a, it's a good connection, but having the time to do it uh, is the second thing. You know, holding down the job and trying to fit this in. Um, so that's one of the things you know, I'd like to, like to kind of see how I can adjust my schedule and my life to be able to accommodate some points of work. Uh, really, one of the main reasons I'm here also is um, to be able to take the information Bill offers and pass it on to my students. So I am a professor of radio here. This is my classroom. I teach you know, up to 20 at a time in, in any given class. And so the more information that I can gain uh, in getting them successful careers in radio and voiceover work, is really uh, where I want to head. And so being able to just take the information today and disseminate it amongst some, some younger, a younger generation that will be your competitors. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we need, more competitors. Yeah. Yeah. As if there weren't you know, hundreds of thousands of others. But, no, that's but yeah, we just want to be able to equip, that, and that's the goal of our radio program, is to be able to equip these guys as radio does change and evolve. You know, what's the future of radio? Can't answer that, but we also we always know that the our voices are going to go a long way and be able to communicate. So that's the kind of stuff I want to be able to build into my classes and pass on to my students, as well as do it myself. A number of years ago, Carl and I uh, were working on the air together. We were doing a morning show, and actually our, our partner... Um, lady who had uh, had been on some of the, the larger stations in Chicago for a number of years and had worked with a gentleman who had gotten into the voiceover business. He went from uh, a production director in radio. They'd been, I think, at Q101, maybe, and went from there, or maybe it was the mix, uh, from there into voiceovers full-time and was making millions of dollars. And it caught my attention. <laughs> and I thought, you know, I, I would, I thought, well, for one thing, I love that, you know, there's the, there's the performance artistic part of it that probably appeals to you to, to, to some extent. It certainly does me. I mean, I enjoy the performance end of it. But the idea that I could actually make a really, really good living potentially doing it really caught my attention. And it was always in the back of my mind that I wanted to pursue it. And I won't get too much into it because actually I think it's important that you understand why the environment has changed to allow us more easily to do it from our homes because at that point it wasn't that way. So to, to make that commitment was a completely different scenario than it is to make that commitment today. We'll talk more about that, but that's, it's funny because Carl and I were really working together when that dream started to take place in my own, in my own mind. So thanks again, Carl, for everything. Brian, let's, let's go, then we'll just kind of work our way around here. My name is Brian. I'm uh, from uh, New Jersey. 
Uh, We're represented on the coast today. Jersey, I love it. Close to the city there. Since uh, 2003, I've been a full-time entertainer. I primarily do comedy stage hypnosis shows. So, uh, I Are you going to give us a, uh, a sampling today? Sure, if you like. We can relax everybody, put that confidence in there, no problem. Confidence, yeah. So it became necessary to, um, to create some BOR, some back-of-the-room products on uh, quit smoking, lose weight, stress, insomnia, audio programs that I sell after a show. So to increase the revenue after the show. So that brought me into voice work, and then... I really caught the bug, and I had to build my own studio. And then I, you know, went from a USB mic up to, you know, up to a Neumann. <laughs> now I have my own studio. Um, I have a great deal of marketing experience, uh, marketing myself as an entertainer, um, website design, and and technical knowledge with audio stuff. I'm really good with. Um, so I want to get into commercial voiceover. I, I've done a lot of training in New York City with some of the top folks there. I go out to auditions um, in the city, and, and it's like playing a lottery. <laughs> He's like, so I'm looking for, for, for steady income. The hypnosis shows is fun. It's great. It's very um, seasonal and, you know, weekend, evening. So I have a lot of time on my hands, but they spend all day long doing marketing and all sorts of stuff. So I like to generate a steady stream of income uh, with, uh, with voice work, and I'm just trying to find my niche and, and the skills that, that I have or don't have to, to make that work. And one of my friends I went to high school with is a very successful narrator. I'm out of L.A. Actually, he just narrated Tom Clancy's book. <laughs> his latest one. Oh, really? So he's, okay. he's very... That's a good gig. <laughs> he's got like 60 audio words. But, and, and that sort of shunned me away from audio books because he does, the, you know, he, he narrated Dune in Fahrenheit. And, and I'm like, well, that's heavy stuff. That's, yeah. it, it, that's not me. I can't, and then, and then Bill, he, he, he shined the light on, well, you know, if you find your niche, you can get into different types of books. You don't have to do, you know, fiction or nonfiction. You can specialize into a certain category, and that sort of perked my ears, because I, I love marketing, and, and I, I've got, you know, hundreds of marketing books and sales books, and, and, and you know, Bill was, was talking about that, the road that he went down, so this is a new, shedding a new light on audio book, and I'm excited that this may lead to a, to a steady path into voiceover work. That's the plan. That's why. That's so you so you are doing some work now. You just like to kind of make I'm it more some consistent. Some commercial work yeah. here and there. I've had one national radio spot play. What spot was it? Uh, Internetbriefcase.com. Congratulations. I, just, uh, I played uh, all over the world. Yeah. I think I got paid like fifty bucks. But you know, <laughs> but it's on, your, it's on your resume. Yeah, it is. And I just did an audition Friday for LifeLock. Uh, oh, did you? Okay. Yeah, good luck. I missed that. Good luck on that. And by the way, any any burning questions on your mind that you're hoping specifically it's, to have? I just to want to make today? sure that you know that I can get into the niche that's suited for me, right? And that I have the okay. the skills to do that. Well, actually, our if next. If I don't have the skills to do that, I would hope that you know, tell me that I. Go to oh, I'll be else. honest with you. Yeah. <laughs> Could tell you to go sell pencils or right. no? I'm, I'm I can kidding. Say I, no, you obviously have have the skill set. It's just a matter of directing it. I you just know. I just need some you yeah. know, guidance and. I understand. And road <coughs> Absolutely. Okay. Good. And again, thanks for coming out from uh, New Jersey. That makes sense. Thanks. Tyler. Um, I'm Tyler. I'm an Olivet student. This is my dad. Oh. Um, <laughs> I'm really. That was tough for you to say, that wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I'm really into theater and like acting and stuff, and I've been told that I have like a good radio voice, kind of. Um, and I've always wanted to do something like this and hopefully make money because it's kind of hard to find a job in that industry um, and make money for it. So this is kind of like an extra thing that I want to learn how to do and get good at and then possibly do it in the future. That's all I have. Good. Well, parents can be a real embarrassment to their kids, so the fact that you came today, that's a pretty big deal. I'll try not to do too many corny jokes. Or it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Gary? My name's Gary. I'm from Minneapolis area, and uh, I started in radio back in the 70s, early 80s, and then switched over to computers, IT industry, which, as you pointed out, is falling off. Uh, also did mainframe COBOL type of work. Uh, started moving into some of the PC work, but Minneapolis a really tough market right yeah. now um, for IT work. And so I'm unemployed at the moment. My wife's unemployed, and so I'm looking for something to... Uh, bring in some income. Started with Voice 123 uh, back in January. I've auditioned 
think around 48 times I've had one, you know, that paid 75 bucks, and that's pretty much been it. Hey, let me not to interrupt. But I just want to ask: you, Are you all familiar with Voice One Two Three? It's what they call a paper. For those of you who don't know, it's a paper play site. It costs like three hundred bucks a year to have a premium membership, and essentially they make uh, auditions available to you. And most people who are getting started in the business will subscribe to Voice One Two Three dot com and Voices dot com as a source of um, of auditions, which I did. Uh, t actually, I'm not a member now, but was for like four <coughs> years. And it took me 100 auditions to get my first job. By the way, if that makes you feel any better, yeah, it's I think crazy. that was yeah, it is. probably it's insane. At eight or nine when I got the first one, which yeah. was pretty good. And it was a bank down in Mississippi. Yeah, uh, yeah. Running some TV ads, I guess. I'm trying to imagine so, about 80,000 people, you know, competing for these jobs yeah, yeah. <laughs> to get a sense. It's, it's insane. But, I'm sorry for interrupting. But, no, that's fine. Um, looking basically for some uh, improvement on editing techniques. Okay. Um, some different software because I use GarageBand, right. which is a more basic package. Um, also looking for the niche and kind of everything. Okay. So, by the way, our our next thing that we'll be getting into, we'll be doing uh, an exercise on finding your niche, trying to identify where you might be best at. <coughs> it's all about finding what you really enjoy and are good at in terms of what you know and your knowledge and your passion. So, good. Okay, great. Okay. It's good to have you here. Good. Thanks. My name is Patty. I'm from the area. I live in Beecher. I'm basically a stay-at-home mom. I also train horses, though, and train riders. That's really what I've been doing the last 20 years. And how cool is that? It is very fun. Um, sometimes it's kind of hard in the winter, though, when it's really cold. Um, and income is very up and down, depending, of course, on the weather, and, and students come and go. Um, my husband actually did a voiceover class, I think, with Donald at Prairie State a couple years ago. He came home and said, you should do this. Mm -hmm. oh, really? He's actually an auctioneer. Um, that's what he does for a living every day. It's, you know, he uses his voice. But... Um, you know, I'm just, I'm clueless about the whole industry. I don't really know a whole lot. I like books. I like to read. I read to my kids every night. And I just started to try to see what's, what's out there for me, so. Good. There's nothing much more fun than this. At least that's been my experience. I haven't found anything yet, so. Except maybe writing. But Except maybe <laughs> writing, yeah. I don't have to come out and check it out, and then I can, uh, I can give you a, a, what I think about that. But that sounds like a lot of fun. We'll have to, do you have a card or something? Um, actually, I don't, but I, my we'll talk. husband's card is Okay. Okay, good. Well, again, it's good to have you all here. And I, and I did mention this up front, but don't be afraid of the cameras and the microphones. Um, feel free to take notes if you want, but I want to let you know that you will be provided with an audio recording of everything that happens today. So don't worry if you feel like you've missed something or, you know, what did he say about this? Or um, I'll make sure that you all get that. And then also we're videotaping uh, to make this available uh, for sale for people who cannot be here but who want to get something. Um, you know, that they can have to refer back to, which is not the same as being here, but it's the next best thing. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about my story. First of all, I just finished recording my 20th audio book last week. And here are some of the things that... These are three of my recent audio books. I have found my niche to be primarily business-related uh, books. And, that, and, the, and there's actually a whole story behind that. I'll share that a little, a little bit later on. But a lot of this is finding out what you're passionate about, what you're interested in, what you know about, what you're comfortable with. Um, this is actually a, a television evangelist by the name of Rod Parsley from Columbus and uh, <laughs> did his book. Uh, but these, this is my primary interest in business, Mark Sanborn, Phil Cook, who's a movie producer, and uh, the book Jolt. And I'm actually working on two business books right now that I just, where did I set those? Behind me? Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Six Habits of Highly Effective Teams. And Six Habits of Highly Effective Bosses. I have, I think, 11 more scheduled to do after this. So audiobooks have become a big part of my workload. And I had a really big workload to begin with. Um, but audiobook is a, it's a, it's a booming industry. Again, we'll talk more about that. But the, the way I really kind of moved into this, that I had worked here at Olivet, uh, taught in the media program, had worked in radio prior to this. I was in radio for like 25 years and uh, really enjoyed the teaching and mentoring and training. And so this was uh, really appealing to me, and it was everything that I dreamed it would be and a, and a whole bunch more. Absolutely loved my time here. Left here in 2005, um, worked for a business consulting firm in Chicago for a while uh, where we uh, went in and sold business consulting services to medium and larger uh, companies. And actually, I was pretty successful at that, and. Uh, enjoyed that, actually more than I thought that I might, 
But the problem was found out that over time, I really did the way that the company was interacting with their clients and some really questionable practices. I just didn't feel comfortable with that any longer, so I left. Uh, ended up working for an instructional design firm. I was vice president of a, it was a small instructional design firm uh, where we worked with primarily Fortune 500 companies like Kellogg and Caterpillar, uh, Colgate, where we would actually go into their, into their environment and help create these high performance learning training environments for their employees. So the, to make the employees more valuable to the company and help them to be more fulfilled in their jobs and to achieve their personal goals as well as the corporate goals. I really enjoyed that a lot. And while I was doing that, I ended up doing a lot of e-learning narration for our own clients. Just as kind of a side thing that I, you know, it's just kind of packaged into my job and, and, and I really enjoyed it. But after being there for a while, uh, the company was starting to, to go down the tubes. Uh, just because the, the economy took a turn for the worse. And the first two things that get cut in a bad economy, number one, training. Number two, advertising and marketing. Well, that, that doesn't bode well for the voiceover artist, by the way, who relies on doing a lot of commercial work as well as you know, e-learning. But it hit our industry really hard. And part of the problem was I had, at that point, I had decided to pursue uh, a PhD in education to make myself more valuable to my company because those were the types of people that we were dealing with in these large Fortune 500 corporate environments. So I was, I was actually working on my doctorate in education with an emphasis in, in training and performance improvement. And so I was happily you know, doing my thing, trying to, to, to better myself within my company, make, make myself more valuable. I'm cut down to part-time within my, my job uh, because the cash flow is so bad, we're losing clients because they're cutting their budgets. And, and I have a family, three kids, you know, what am I gonna do? So it was at that point that I decided, you know, sometimes it's when you're actually against the wall that you'll do the thing that you wanted to do but have always been afraid to do for whatever reason because there's some risk involved. But when you have nothing to lose, it's amazing how resourceful you become and are willing to do the things that you may not have been willing to do before. So at that point, I decided that it was time to pursue uh, a voiceover career because we couldn't, you know, it was a part-time income. It just wasn't going to work for us. So I hit the internet, you know, the first place you go, Google, <laughs> to start looking for information because I knew next to nothing about the voiceover business. And really had, I had a hard time finding that information in one centralized place. So I just researched, I mean, I spent, I made it my full-time job. I mean, I was doing this other, this other job on a part-time basis, but I was committing, you know, six plus hours a day in researching the voiceover industry and trying to, to build a voiceover business. And, uh, and so I learned all I, I could, absorbed all I could, and uh, long story short, within one year of beginning that journey, I had not only created a good solid income, but was making more money than I had ever made before in anything that I did. I was, I, by the end of the first 12 months, I was making more than $2,000 a week. And I thought, okay, maybe this isn't, you know, when I first started, I thought, you know, if I could just squeak out a few dollars here and there to supplement this dying. By the way, that company would end up going bankrupt. But then I, you know, I saw the writing on the wall, but I thought if I could supplement that somehow. Uh, and then as I saw that it became full time, and then, you know, and since then, uh, the long story short, every year since then, over the past five years, my business has grown. And this is a down economy. I mean, obviously, I don't have to tell you that. And like I said, the first two things to get cut are training and, and advertising which are two big sources of the work that I get in voiceovers, doing e-learning and doing, and doing commercials. So I say all that to say that there is work out there that you can build not only a solid but a thriving <coughs> business, even within a bad economy. Um, a lot of people, when you start to get into the business, will tell you, especially struggling voiceover talent, they'll say, you know, there's just not enough work out there. And there are so many more new people coming in, and it's just getting more and more difficult. Well. If you're a savvy marketer, and it's not difficult, it really isn't complicated, but if you just understand what to do, where to go, who to talk to, I just want to encourage you on the front end that there is work out there. And if you can gain the basic skill set, and, and here are the, the components of success for voiceovers. There's skills, studio, a business plan, and a mindset. And I want to talk about those for a few minutes. And, and uh, Vicki, can you toss me a bottle of water? Thanks, girl. All right.
Here's the thing, and I think it might be Brian that made reference to this earlier, is that most people who get into the voiceover business are trying to win the lottery. And by that I mean about 30% of the voiceover market is broadcast, commercial related, radio, television, uh, movie trailers, TV promos. And most people, myself included when I got into the business, when you think about voiceovers, the most obvious thing that comes to mind, movie trailers, TV promos, network television ads, and those kind of highly visible. Again, that accounts for about 30% of the market. 70% of the market is non-broadcast. It's e-learning. It's corporate narration. It's audiobooks. It's the thing that doesn't come to mind, first of all, to most voiceover talent. And I would, take, I would venture to say that 90% of the people who get into voiceovers are trying to pursue the 30, and I say 30 is generous. It might be even, you know, it's between 10 and 30%. And it might be closer to 10%, but it's the much smaller portion of the voiceover pie is the broadcast. And that's what everybody goes after. For one thing, there are bigger dollars to be had there. When you get the work, and when you, I say when you get the work because it's so highly, highly competitive. Uh, when you get those jobs, you know, they do pay better. And, uh, and I do pursue those jobs, and occasionally I get those jobs. But that's not the bulk of my work. Um, it's like, you know, the people who play the lottery for their retirement plan. That is a foolish way to plan for your retirement. Now, if you want to go pick up a lottery ticket every now and then and hope that you might hit the big jackpot, that's great. But if that is your plan for retirement, that is a foolish retirement plan. However, if you also have an IRA that you contribute to or a retirement program through your work that you contribute to, okay, well, then that, that makes sense. It's very similar in voiceovers. If you, if you put most of your focus on this 70 to 90% of the pie that most voiceover talent really don't focus heavily on, then you can create a steady income. While you, you know, I occasionally get the national ad, I occasionally get the big job and the big paycheck, but the bulk of my work is the day-to-day, -day, I'll say grind, because it's not real glamorous and sexy, but it's, you know, it's doing e-learning narrations. It's doing audiobooks, and it's not the Tom Clancy audiobooks or the Harry Potter. <laughs> because again, when, you, when you're talking about those things, you're talking about this much of the pie. It's highly, highly competitive. Now, if that is your dream and your goal, absolutely, you should pursue it. And I do, and I have, actually now I think I'm up to 15 agents. So I have access to those jobs, and I audition for those jobs. And like I said, every once in a while, I'll get one of those jobs. But if, that is my, if that's my business plan, I'm dead. That's no better than a part-time job. And it doesn't matter if I pick up a commercial that pays me $20,000. If I only get one a year, I cannot support myself and my family on that one big national ad. I need work coming in steadily. And con Does that make sense? Okay, so what we're going to talk about, really, an audio book is a big part of that, is that non-broadcast part of the pie. So that's what we're going to be focusing on today. Um, there is plenty of work for everybody, or at least for everybody who's willing to look for where that work is at. Most people aren't looking in the right places, and that's the problem. And then, you know, those who want, mar we talk about marketing, we'll talk about where to look for that. And by the way, ACX.com, which most of you are probably familiar with, if not, we'll be talking about it, is probably right now the hottest place and the biggest source for that work. And ACX uh, is owned by Amazon.com. It's actually like a division of Audible.com, which is owned by Amazon.com and on and on. But it's completely revolutionizing the audio book market. And we'll talk more about that uh, a little bit later on. So you're going to have to have the skills. And by skills, here are the, here are the elements of that. We're gonna, you need to have reading skills. If you, you know, if you can read reasonably well aloud, and by the way, you know, those who have backgrounds as teachers and as pastors, and this is, I think, is just a natural, you know, for you. This should be a very easy transition. But even if that's not your background, as long as you can, if, you know, if you like to read stories to your kids, and Patty, I think you made mention of that. If you can read aloud, if you enjoy telling stories, if you can develop some basic competence with a computer and operating, and operating software, which I don't think there's anybody in this room that does not have the, the capability of doing that. I'm not talking about overly complex stuff, but if you're willing to learn some, some basic skills there and computer skills, then you'll be okay on that end of things, and we'll be talking about those. The next thing is you're going to need to have a studio. 
How many of you have your own home studio right now? Okay, so about, about half of the room. Those of you who don't, is that something at this point you're thinking about or have you really given it much thought or, okay, okay. Because that is something that you will need. And um, we're actually going to be uh, talking to a studio engineer this morning via Skype. He's in North Carolina. He's one of the most respected studio engineers in the voiceover business. His name's Dan Friedman. Uh, he's an author as well of, of a great book that I wish that I had that had been available when I first got started uh, in, in the business. So you'll need to have a studio, uh, a quiet space. It doesn't have to be a world-class studio, but it does have to be a quiet space, which in my experience has been the biggest challenge, especially um, when you've got kids and you live in a residential area and planes fly overhead on occasion and all that kind of stuff. But those are things that everybody deals with and they can, and they can be overcome. Um, a computer, and by the way, I use, it doesn't have to be necessarily, and Gary, I don't, you know, I don't know what your philosophy is on this, but you're an IT guy. Uh, you know, I'm sure, far more about computers than I do. I use a four-year-old Dell Optiplex that runs XP, Windows XP, which is an you know, older platform, just because it doesn't have as many conflicts with my software, uh, that I picked up on eBay for like 250 bucks. Um, it takes a, a good microphone, so you know all my money is in my microphone. It's a it's a one thousand dollar microphone, a Neumann. But this microphone right here, I used. You can buy these on eBay for between fifty and sixty bucks. It's a Marshall MXL two thousand one. I'm not necessarily endorsing it. I'm just telling you that this is the microphone I used for the first two years of my career. I did national ads with this microphone. Uh, you don't have to spend $1,000. I, I only invested and graded up in my equipment as I had cash flow. So that's the reason I tell you that. You don't have to start off by spending three to $5,000 uh, in your studio. But you're going to need to have a good solid uh, microphone, a preamp, or something to power. A condenser studio microphones are not powered by themselves. They need a preamp uh, to power them. And again, we'll talk more about that when we talk to Dan on the Skype call. And you'll need to have a good sound card or audio interface that, that uh, takes the analog signal, turns it into digital, and um, to be able to uh, then edit that software. And again, we'll cover, these are just the things we'll be covering today. So we've got that. You're going to need to have a, a business plan. And this, as I mentioned earlier, this is the biggest gap. The marketing and the business plan, this is where most people fail. And they give up in frustration. And it's not because they're not good. It's not because they're not dedicated. It's just because they hit a wall and they're not sure what else to do. And a good marketing plan begins with, and Brenda alluded to this earlier. Uh, actually, I don't think you alluded. I think you actually said it. It starts with having an outstanding demo. And we'll talk about demo. I do believe in, within audiobooks, you can record your own demo without a whole lot of hassle. When you get into commercial demo, that is something I think you need to have done professionally uh, because it's such that area when you get into broadcast and commercial, it's so highly, highly competitive that agents and casting directors and <coughs> production companies are looking for very specific things uh, that you really should work with a, a top notch, world class world, uh, demo producer on. But when it comes to your audiobooks, uh, I produced my own, actually, I produced most of my own commercial demo as well, but it was after a lot of experience. But I've totally produced my own audio demo. After having my first demo produced by a Grammy Award winning audiobook producer, I didn't get any work off of it. So I produced my own, and I've had more work than I can, than I can handle. And, and I'll, I'll fill you in on the details of that later. And that's nothing against the producer. It was about me learning what I'm good at. And that's what we're going to talk about in a few minutes, finding your, your passion, finding your niche. And once you find that, uh, you'll find out that the doors begin, begin to open for you. And then also there's the mindset. This is the fourth thing. A lot of people stop before they gain their momentum or, be or before they succeed. Uh, a lot of the conversations I have go like this when I talk to voice voiceover talent, because I consult with a lot of voiceover talent. I'll say, so have you done um, ABC? And they'll say, well, you know, I did that for a couple months, but nothing happened. I I get that a lot. I'll ask them a specific question I know is important for their success, and the response is, well, I did that. Yeah, I tried it, and it didn't work. How long did you try it? Well, I don't know, a couple months. This requires what I call a marathon mentality. You can't, it's not a 50-yard sprint. It really is a 26.2-mile run. 
and you have to pace yourself accordingly, you have to have the right mindset, and you have to realize, I mean, you've auditioned 40, oh, 48 times, times voice one, two, three, and have had one job oh, so yeah. far. See, most people at that point would say, I suck, I'm not meant to do voiceovers. And they would roll up their mic, co mic cords and go look for another job. And it has nothing to do with their ability at all. It has nothing to do with their ability. It has to do with the fact that they think they can't get work. Nothing could be further from the truth. It's just that they aren't looking at enough places or have enough activity going on. And that's something else that we'll address. But you'd have to have the right mindset and say, you know what? I realize that this may not happen next week. It may not happen next month. But if you have a reasonable level of talent and you have a demo produced and you have a website, within a year to two years, you can develop a very, very good and a very solid income. But it does require consistent and constant work. I mean, you can ask my wife, by the way, if I have not introduced her yet, Vicki. <laughs> Thank you, my lovely wife, who's our assistant today. Um, do I not spend hours, especially early on, hours every day looking for work, trying to find new avenues to market myself? All day, all night. <laughs> okay, not, well, okay. All day and part of the night. Well, like I said, it was really a full-time effort. Yeah. It was a full-time. There was not a day that went by that I was not looking. Now, so when I first started off, 90% of my time was spent marketing myself. 10% of my time was spent recording. Today, it's just the opposite. 90% of my time is spent recording. Actually, it's more than that. 95 to 99% of my time is spent recording. 1 to 5% of my time is spent marketing myself. Because actually, I'm to the place now where I, I've, over, I've been overscheduled now for probably the past year to the point where it's almost become a detriment to me physically. I mean, there's only some, you know, when it's just you, you can't outsource your voice. They hire you for you. It's you. And, and that's, so that's, that's a nice problem to deal with. So now I'm in the process of letting go of some of my lower paying clients as I continue to get new clients in. And that's, that's a whole other scenario. But I tell you that to say that that's the way it starts. You work and you work and you work and you work and boom, you get a job. And you work 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 and you work. And then you get another client, another job. Well, before you know it, you start to build a book of business. You start to build a base of clients that you keep happy, that keep coming back to you, some frequently, some occasionally. Some never again for whatever reason. Um, but over time, the marketing becomes less and less of your time. And the work becomes more and more of your time. And again, I just say that up front so that you're not surprised. Because that's where it, that gets a lot of people. They just stop because they think, well, I must be bad at this. Well, no, that really probably has nothing to do with it. The thing is, it takes time. And it takes... It takes